and this is Beth McDonald with Venetia Sky. This month we have been following the beer can races from the Venetia Yacht Club and we are interviewing the captain of each sailboat and today I'm proud to say we have our first female captain Deborah Lyons of Stolen. So welcome Deborah. Thank you. And tell us about Stolen. How did you come up with that name? Oh, uh, actually, um, when I moved here from uh, Chicago, uh, I wanted a boat that was very light, that I could do everything on it. Uh, and there, uh, the people here, uh, a lot of the locals here, uh, told me about someone who was also local selling this boat. And so I bought the boat from him. How long ago did that, you move here? I moved here in 2000 and bought the boat in 2001. So I've had it for 21 years. <laughs> and he had named the boat Stolen. So it just came it with the boat. Fit. Yeah. Okay. It fit. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, what kind of sailboat is this? Uh, this is a uh, 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 Tillotson, uh, Pearson Tillotson J24. Uh, it's a one design boat. Uh, it's really meant to be uh, out of the water, uh, you know, hoisted every time you go racing, especially if you're racing one design. Um, but there is no hoist here. It, the hoist here does not work, so uh, it needs to be in the water if I want to race in Venetia. <laughs> Okay, so it has to come out of the water to be to to be uh, to be effective in one design. Yes, because okay. there's a certain weight that you have to be uh, in the parameters wise. So um, uh, it, they do get waterlogged when they're okay. sitting in the water, and then uh, they get slower. So uh, so the, the things that catch yeah, on the bottom, the paint, of the the paint is just extra. A drag. So, oh, interesting. preferably, you want to just be able to hoist it out of the water, keep it nice and clean, and then put it back in. I get it. That's more complicated. Yeah, it is. Okay. It, that there's nothing here for that to happen. Right. And as far as the sailboat racing, what's your history with racing? Okay. Uh, I was 18 when I first uh, had my first experience sailing and uh, it was a friend of uh, mine that um, had bought a boat. Uh, he was also uh, you know, a fairly new sailor and I uh, said to him, hey, you want to start racing? And we said, yeah, and this was in Chicago. So um, we, we, we were terrible at first and, you know, then he sold the boat after a couple of years, and I uh, was very attracted to the One Design uh, fleet. There's a Tartan 10 fleet uh, in Chicago. It's probably smaller now than it used to be, but at the time, as I was racing in Chicago, uh, up to seven and a half years every weekend, uh, every uh, holiday, it was just in my blood for, for that long. But anyway, the the, the Tartan 10 uh, One Design fleet uh, at some at many times had 30 or more boats on on the line all at the same time starting. So it was very exciting and really fun to be part of that whole scene. Oh, interesting! It was very competitive as well. So there's a lot of learning going on, and you know, it's really it was really fun. Okay. Really mm -hmm. And you've been out here for a long time. So how did you find your way to? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so I moved here in 2000, uh, and uh, I had an opportunity to move to an office that was uh, part of the group that I worked for in Chicago. And uh, so they moved me out here, um, and the, the partner used to come in and say, Deborah, you want to go to California, specifically Benicia, sailing and art. And so he kept saying that for years. Finally, I said, okay, well, let me go check it out. And I said, yep, yeah, I want to move out there. Looked in Alameda, looked in Benicia, fell in love with Benicia right away. Very different from Chicago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's very uh, similar to, you know, where I grew up in Bogota. It has these mountains and the 
water and the temperature is very similar as well. So it felt, I felt right at home. Um, and, um, uh, you know, um, the way that I got uh, into it is that I moved to the condos right over here as well and um, went to the yacht club. Met Noble <laughs> and his wife Noble. and his uh, wife uh, and um, uh, you know said I want to help with whatever there is and there was youth sailing so I got into uh, teaching youth sailing uh, during the summer and I um, I became the director for I think, five years of the youth sailing right. program yeah so that was a lot of fun. Uh, we didn't race up there. We raced right in this little area over here. Um, and uh, I think their little sailboats are yeah. about the size for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there, a lot of kids grew up uh, going to that program. Okay. It still continues to this day uh, through uh, Dareth's efforts. So, yeah. It's, yeah, that's a great program. It's a great program, yeah. All right. And what about your crew? How many people do you need to take this out? Yeah, so we definitely need five people, uh, even in just normal weather. Um, and a lot of it has to do with weight. Um, the winds can get pretty stiff out here, and if we don't have enough weight on the boat, then we have a tendency to slide sideways and not be effective. The rudder comes out of the water and we just sort of go a lot slower because we're on our ear. We need some former linebackers. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then a lot of times, you know, people have things to do. So if you only have five, one person having to do something, is a, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and, you know, having all, most of the time they're all together, but when you when you only have an alternate that's only hey can you come next week it's it's harder to get that sort of person to stand by so yes yeah but uh, I've had crew that's sailed with me for years um, my uh, four deck person Ken Jensen he's been sailing with me for um, twenty years I think almost 20, no not quite eight. 18, 17, 18 years. I'm yeah. very surprised to hear that long of a time that people stick together. That's amazing. Yeah, it's... yeah. I've had uh, other people too that have stuck, but then they've moved away, like to Florida area. Yeah. Moved to Florida, so you can't come here every week. <laughs> right. And now I have another crew member who's moving to North Carolina, so. Was it South Carolina? One of the Carolinas. I never remember which one. Uh, um, and uh, he, uh, you know, he's going to be gone. So I'm, I'm in the process of bringing new crew and, you know, we will and trying to of that for you. Yeah. you. Deserve it, good crew. Yeah. yeah, but it is nice to have people who, uh, on a weekly basis, are committed because then you, you learn your what. To, what to expect from everyone, and they, you know, everyone sort of starts working together really well uh, because they know now what they're supposed to do without, you know, any, any issues. And then if something happens, then it's easier to recover when people already know where they're supposed to be and what they're doing. So. Yes, the more I'm learning about the racing teams, I see there's so much more to it than just about winning a race, it's teamwork and mm -hmm. growing as a person, and all those things. Mm -hmm. So, you won the first race. Tell us about <laughs> that. <laughs> you mean of this season? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so I, you know, my boat, since it's light, uh, we, we only had uh, four people on board, no, three. So, the boat was even lighter. And there wasn't a lot to do and, uh, when there's no wind. Uh, uh, anything that you do is fairly forgiving because you're not losing a lot of speed because you're not going too fast anyway. And so we have one crew member that raced, uh, started racing with us from scratch, didn't know anything about sailing last year, and he's still learning a lot. And he had to do things that he's not used to doing, but it worked out okay. So for us, you know, light 
days are really good for us because uh, we're lightweight and we don't have to push uh, tonnage through the water like the bigger boats do. Right. I enjoyed watching that race when we put the video together. Then I saw the beauty of light winds can be good too, you know? Yeah, for us, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which doesn't normally happen, so we don't usually, you know, take a lead like that. That's not normal. <laughs> okay, that was a unique race. Yes, All right. it was. <laughs> well, what else would you like to talk about? Uh, well, you know, the, the, the fleets have changed uh, throughout the years. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, is is different about how our fleets are set up is we have uh, a fleet, a fleet, and a C fleet. So there, usually the ratings in the A fleet are a certain uh, number. Of boats with a certain rating go into A fleet, and boats with a certain rating go into C fleet, the slower, smaller boats. Okay. Uh, and then we used to have another fleet that was the trimaran fleet, which they're completely in a world of their own, and they go really fast in the seas. They usually win all the time because this is a reaching uh, course, mainly. And so they could do, a, you know, they would just take off and win all the time. Um, so I used to be in the... The smaller boat fleet. Uh, there is another J twenty four that races as well. It's Woodstock. Uh, he's a fairly Woodstock. new. Yeah, he's a fairly new sailor, uh, uh, and he's. I commend him. He's, he's done single handing uh, last week. Oh, he he's went the out, one. Yeah, he went yes. out single handed <laughs> on that on that stiff of a breeze. So I commend him, uh, but I I don't want to. I don't want to hurt myself. No, I, I <laughs> I've done that, her. and I don't want not not the single handed, but gone yes. without uh, full crew. Um, and so he's in the C fleet, whereas I'm an A fleet. And the reason I made the switch from C fleet to A fleet is because um, I was winning every year, every year, and that wasn't fun. that wasn't fun. There was. It wasn't fun, and I didn't want to take away from people who deserved it more, because usually in our races, if there's a winning boat, we then we give an extra three seconds per mile uh, to the rest of the fleet so that they can also win. And you know, it's to make sure That's that nice. everybody has a chance to win something. Has uh, their moment. Has their moment. Yeah, and that wasn't happening. So I I requested and and you know uh, if I could move to the to the A fleet and uh, was granted. It's it's much more um, uh, you know it, it more equal now. Uh, I've I've won. You know, Noble's definitely the most winning book, but I've actually won a season in A fleet and very you good. Know, or come in second or third. So it's just like it's a very equal competition. It's fun. That's Makes nice. Good ma- sportsmanship. There's a goal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's hey. the, the sportsmanship is really, really uh, important. Okay. Well, running out of questions. You're doing so good at being articulate about this. <laughs> oh. I have to study about these classes of races. That's something I don't know about. But yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you some 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 stories about okay. uh, some things that I experienced um, that sort of molded me into the rest of the day. Um, uh, I, I did a, a few Mackinac races in Chicago. Uh, and in Chicago, the, the weather is uh, it can be unpredictable sometimes. Yeah. And uh, the it's a big body of water, Lake Michigan. Uh, but smaller than the ocean. So when there's a big wind, the, you know, the ocean, the swells become big and large. You just sort of go up and down very slowly over these swells. They're, they're wide apart, whereas in Lake Michigan, they tend to sort of crunch back together. And um, You're bringing back memories. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you from Chicago? No. Okay. But- been there, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, I've experienced some really uh, incredible uh, moments out on Lake Michigan, uh, and um, you know, where the 
like the boat uh, has uh, a hull speed. So no matter how much wind you have, the boat can only go a certain speed and no more, unless it's surfing down a wave or right. right. And so uh, there's been a couple of times where I've been on a boat and this is early on in my learning, in my education. And, um, you know, there's just the three of us doing the night watch, middle of the night, and we're surfing down these 20 foot waves. Wow. And the hull speed for the tar tartan tent is about uh, eight and a half knots, nine knots. Wow. And we were clocking speeds of 22 knots going down these waves because they're so big. And the whole rigging of the boat starts to hum when you start going faster than the hull speed because it doesn't, it's, everything starts to vibrate. Some kind of physics in there, Yes, huh? <laughs> yeah. So those are some of the things that, you know, you, you don't know unless you've experienced them. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty scary, but yeah. exhilarating at the same time if you're, if you're able to navigate them. So, okay. Yeah. So would that tie in with scariest moments? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Yes. I, I had one scary moment, but actually it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. Uh, I've, ne I've never, I had never had a man, over man overboard situation. And there was once where my foredeck, uh, and we had these really crazy waves, lots of wind, and he was doing a jive, and somehow we just did a, a little, you know, back and forth like that. He had the pole in his hands, and he went one way, and then the pole went the other way and launched him right off the, the boat. And I, you know, we kind of look, and we turned around, and, you know, saw him, and came around, and picked him up, and it was scary. But with the crew that was there, uh, it was very calm and very easy, you know, everyone was doing their job. And, it reacted That's, well yeah, yeah, to the situation. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, and then we had Bella's wife. Was she upset? She was the good it. news first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh. Honey, can you bring me some clothes? <laughs> That's <was> very cute. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, what about out here? I, I guess I was surprised the first time we ever went out on the strait. I thought it would be very easy to passage, but it can get rough out there. Yeah, the, the, so uh, the wind will come through the canyons and sort of compress and come out through the canyons. So the, the, you know, they call those stingers. And, um, stingers. Yeah, so, so when, it's, when it's gusty, uh, you, can, you can bet that that wind is going to come and just like try to slap you down. So you have to make sure that somebody's watching those those stingers so that you're not caught unaware and then do a, a roundup because uh, wow. your boat will just go right into it if you're not prepared and you don't let the, the, the sails loose. Uh, right, their thing. right when you need it. <laughs> yeah, right when you need it. So, okay. um, yeah, so that's one of the the interesting things. The other one is that if there's a uh, prevailing wind, um, stiff wind for a while, those waves can actually come in, uh, you know, more toward the, uh, uh, under the bridge still, oh. and, and, and we'll have to navigate those, and that's also not good for us. So there's a race that we do uh, that's called the uh, Chasing the Moon race. And it's, about. yeah, and that's a race where we start off uh, in the evening and uh, we go by whatever our time is so that we can all finish, supposedly, through our candy caps and everything else at the same time. So, so it's a staggered start. Um, and we just come right out of the marina and go. And it goes all the way into San Pablo Bay to one of the marks out there. It takes, oh, wow. it takes a, a fair amount of time, uh, a few hours, to 
go there and back. And most every time we've done it, it's been very, very windy and the waves are big. And for us, it's just crashing into the waves. Every <laughs> time we crash into a wave, it stops us because we're so light. So we don't usually do that as often uh, because of that. I, I think I've become a, a fair weather sailor and I really enjoy the, the beer can. It gets me out every week without a lot of commitment because I have other interests. But, a shorter yeah, time, yes. Right. So, but I'm just grateful that I can do it. I mean, yes. Who, I would never want to live anywhere else. This is a great place. I agree. Live. We yeah. love it here. Yeah. Well, thank you, Deborah, for letting us interview you and good luck with your races in the future. Thank you. Thank you very Welcome. much. Welcome.